In the farthest reaches of the galaxy were planets teemed with diverse life forms. One story stood out among the countless others. A story of unexpected kindness and the blurred lines between duty and humanity. The story begins on the war-torn surface of a planet known for its resource-rich landscapes, a planet that had become a battleground in an ongoing conflict between alien factions. Amidst the chaos, there was a young alien girl, weak and fragile, abandoned by her own people. She had been left behind, a casualty of a brutal skirmish, as her fellow soldiers retreated to regroup. Her species, known for their incredible resilience, had never been known to show mercy, let alone offer help to the wounded. But on that day, there was one person who defied the norms, one person who didn't see her as an enemy or a mere casualty. He saw her as someone in need of help. His name was Lieutenant Ethan Cole, a medic stationed on the front lines of the war. Ethan was a human, and like many of his kind, he had been sent to this distant planet to assist with the wounded from both sides of the conflict. Despite the violence and animosity between the different species, his role was clear, save as many lives as possible, regardless of their allegiance. As he moved through the battlefield, tending to injured soldiers, his eyes fell upon the girl. She was lying in the dirt, her body battered and bruised, her alien form almost unrecognizable beneath the dust and blood. Ethan had seen many wounded soldiers, many of them in much worse condition, but something about this girl struck him. There was a sense of vulnerability in her eyes, a sense of desperation that told him she wasn't just another soldier. Without hesitation, Ethan moved towards her, pushing aside the debris and soldiers from both sides to reach her. The enemy forces were still in the vicinity, but Ethan didn't care. His training had taught him that human life, and alien life was precious, and he was determined to do everything in his power to save her. He knelt beside the girl, his medic instincts kicking in as he checked her pulse and surveyed her injuries. Her breathing was shallow and her pulse weak, but she was alive. Her once glowing skin, characteristic of her species, was pale and cold. The wound on her side was severe, likely from a blast, and blood was still seeping from the injury. It was clear she needed immediate medical attention. But there was one problem. No one from her faction was coming to help her. No one had stopped to check on her. And that was when Ethan realized something. In this universe, where wars and battles had destroyed countless lives, there was very little room for compassion. Yet here he was, a human, a medic willing to risk his life to save an alien girl he had never met before from a faction he knew nothing about. With a deep breath, Ethan carefully began to work. He moved with precision, his hands steady as he began the delicate task of stabilizing her condition. His medical kit had been prepared for every eventuality, but this? This was something he had never prepared for. The alien girl's biology was so different from humans. Her body, despite being frail, seemed to possess a unique resilience. Ethan was amazed at how quickly her wounds began to heal, even as he treated her. It was clear that her species had evolved to survive in conditions he couldn't even begin to comprehend. As he worked, he couldn't help but feel a sense of awe. The girl's breathing began to stabilize, her pulse grew stronger, and the blood flow from her side slowed down. But he knew this wasn't enough. She needed more than just immediate first aid. She needed time, care, and most of all, trust. For a moment, Ethan hesitated. He had a duty to his own man. There were others who needed help, and time was running out. But then, he looked at the girl again. She was alone, abandoned by her own people. And here he was, the only one who cared. The weight of that realization hit him hard, but he wasn't one to back down from a challenge. Ethan lifted the girl gently, cradling her in his arms as he carried her towards the nearest medical facility. His comrades were shocked when they saw him, carrying an enemy soldier in his arms. They were used to seeing him help their own kind, but this was different. They didn't understand why he would risk his life for an alien, especially one who had been part of the enemy faction. But Ethan didn't care about their opinions. He had made a decision, and there was no turning back. Inside the medical facility, Ethan worked tirelessly, doing everything he could to heal the girl. It was slow progress, but it was progress nonetheless. 
As the hours passed, the alien girl's condition improved. Her skin regained its natural glow, and her eyes fluttered open, revealing their bright, otherworldly color. She was confused, disoriented, and frightened, but she was alive. And for the first time in a long time, she was no longer alone. Ethan stayed by her side, speaking to her softly, trying to comfort her in any way he could. He didn't know if she could understand him, but he hoped his voice would bring her some sense of reassurance. The girl, though weak, looked at him with curiosity. She didn't speak, but the look in her eyes said it all. She knew he had saved her life, and for that, she was grateful. As the days went on, Ethan continued to care for her. Slowly, the girl began to trust him, and they started to form an unlikely bond. The language barrier was a challenge, but they communicated through gestures and expressions, and over time, the girl began to speak in broken human words. She told him about her people, her planet, and the war that had torn her world apart. Ethan listened intently, realizing that her story was not much different from the stories of the soldiers he had treated over the years. War had taken everything from her, just as it had taken from so many others. But as she told her story, Ethan realized something important. It wasn't just the soldiers who were affected by war. It was the civilians, the innocents, the children, and the wounded who were left behind to pick up the pieces. And that's when Ethan made a vow. He vowed that, no matter what happened, he would always be there for those who needed help, no matter who they were, no matter where they came from. He wasn't just a medic anymore. He was a symbol of hope, a reminder that even in the darkest of times, there was still kindness to be found. And as for the alien girl, she would never forget the human medic who saved her life, who showed her what it meant to care. As the days turned into weeks, the relationship between Ethan and the alien girl, whom he had learned was called Kira, grew deeper. The language barrier that once seemed insurmountable slowly crumbled. Through gestures, expressions, and the few words Kira had managed to pick up from Ethan's constant speaking, they began to communicate more effectively. The hospital wing where Kira had been placed was quiet now, far from the front lines, tucked away in the heart of the human camp. It was a place of healing, but also a place where curiosity lingered. Ethan spent most of his free time with her, showing her the basics of human life, from how to use simple objects to the intricacies of human emotions. But what intrigued Kira the most was the way Ethan seemed to care for everything around him, especially for her. Someone who had been nothing but a soldier, a combatant in a war that wasn't her own choosing. Ethan didn't flinch under the officer's gaze. He had made his decision the moment Kira's life had been in his hands, and there was no going back. He nodded slowly, his voice firm but calm. She's not a prisoner. She's a person. And right now, she's healing. The war isn't over for either of us. But for now, there's no reason to treat her like an enemy. She's done fighting. The officer's expression darkened. But before he could respond, Kira stepped forward, her shoulders squared, her eyes unwavering. She had never felt more certain of who she was in that moment, standing side by side with a human who had saved her, not just physically but emotionally, by showing her something beyond the battlefield. I'm not a weapon, Kira said, her voice steady, almost challenging. I was never just a soldier. I was someone's daughter, someone's sister, and I deserve more than to be reduced to a pawn in your war. There was a tense silence that filled the room. Ethan could feel the weight of Kira's words the rawness in her voice. He realized just how much he had been holding in for all this time, all the years of being treated as little more than a soldier to be used and discarded. But now, she was speaking out for herself, and there was no turning back from that. The officer seemed to hesitate, visibly taken aback by her words. For a moment, the battle-hardened figure stood frozen, as though the very notion of Kira being something more than a soldier was a concept he hadn't been prepared to confront. Finally, he spoke again, though his voice was quieter, less certain. You're free to stay here for now, he said reluctantly, but you will have to face the consequences of your actions eventually. Kira nodded, her expression not one of submission, but of quiet resolve. I understand, but for now, I'm not a soldier. I'm just a person trying to survive. With that, the officer turned and walked out of the room, his footsteps heavy with unresolved tension. 
The door shut behind him with a dull thud, leaving the two of them in the quiet stillness of the tent. Ethan and Kira exchanged a look, one that carried an unspoken understanding. Kira had stood up for herself, and in doing so, she had taken her first step towards something she hadn't even realized she was capable of a life beyond war. For the next few days, the atmosphere in the camp shifted subtly. The soldiers and medics who had once looked at Kira with suspicion began to treat her with a little more respect. They had seen what had transpired, and some began to question their own preconceived notions. Kira had been humanized in their eyes, not just another alien combatant. But there was still the looming question of what would happen next. Would she go back to her people? Would she face judgment for her decision to remain in a human camp? To accept help from an enemy medic? But those were questions for later. For now, Kira's focus was on understanding more about human life and emotions. She had started to ask more personal questions of Ethan, curious about how he lived before the war, about what he valued, and about the concept of family. Her mind was working overtime, trying to make sense of everything she was learning. And each answer she got only seemed to create more questions. One evening, as they sat together in the dim light of the medical tent, Kira turned to Ethan with an expression that suggested she was grappling with something important. Ethan, what does it mean to be human? She asked softly, her gaze searching his face for an answer. You've shown me so much, but I still don't understand. What makes you who you are, beyond the uniform, beyond the war? It was a question that Ethan had never been asked before. What did it mean to be human? He could have given the simple answers, survival, love, compassion, the drive to protect one another. But the question, coming from Kira, made him reflect deeply on everything he had taken for granted. To be human was not just about the physical body or the battles fought. It was about the choices one made in the face of adversity, the ability to find meaning in the smallest of moments. It was about what they could build with the hands they were given, even when it seemed like the world was falling apart. I think it means choosing to be better, Ethan said after a long pause. It's about choosing to do what's right, even when it's hard, even when it's painful. Being human isn't about being perfect. It's about making mistakes and learning from them. And it's about finding something worth fighting for, even when it feels like everything is lost. Kira listened intently, her eyes filled with a mix of wonder and disbelief. She had never thought of it that way. In her world, perfection was the goal, perfection in the military and behavior and survival. There was no room for mistakes, no time for second chances. But Ethan's words were starting to challenge everything she had believed. You think I can be better? Kira asked, her voice quiet but steady, her eyes searching his for some kind of reassurance. Ethan looked at her, his expression softening. I think you already are. You've already made the hardest decision of all. Choosing to not fight anymore. Choosing something different. You've shown more strength than most humans I know. Kira's eyes filled with something she couldn't quite name. It wasn't gratitude, or at least not in the way she understood it. It was something deeper, something more complex, perhaps for the first time, a glimmer of hope. Hope that maybe, just maybe, there was more to life than war. More to her existence than being a soldier. But before she could respond, there was a sudden noise outside the tent. Shouts, hurried footsteps, a flurry of activity. Without a word, Ethan stood his medic instincts kicking in. Kira was already on her feet, her body tense, her mind sharp. There was something about the urgency in the air that told them both something wasn't right. Ethan moved toward the door, but Kira stopped him with a hand on his arm. Her gaze was intense, her voice low. What's happening? Ethan's eyes met hers, and for a moment, the weight of everything hung in the balance. But there was no time for answers, no time for reflection. The world outside was changing, and they had to face whatever came next. Together, Ethan and Kira rushed outside where chaos had erupted. Soldiers were running in all directions, shouting orders. In the distance, a strange, glowing light flickered on the horizon, far beyond the camp's perimeter. Kira's heart raced. She recognized it, an alien signal, one she had once intercepted during her time on the battlefield. But this one was different. It was urgent, almost pleading. What is that? Kira whispered, her voice trembling. Ethan grabbed her arm, his face pale. 
It's not just a signal, it's a call for help. The realization hit them both at once. The war wasn't over. It had just begun. One evening, as the sun dipped behind the horizon and the dim light of the camp settled into a quiet darkness, Kira looked at Ethan with eyes that seemed to ask a question, one that had been building inside her for days. She didn't speak but simply pointed to her chest and then to Ethan, her gaze filled with a mix of curiosity and confusion. Ethan, who had learned by now to read the expressions of his new friend, understood immediately what she was asking. She wanted to know why he had helped her when there was no reason to, why, in a world of war, someone from an enemy faction had shown her kindness when no one else had. Why did I help you? Ethan repeated softly, speaking as if to himself more than to Kira. He had asked himself the same thing many times, ever since he had first seen her lying in the dirt, alone and forgotten. There was no rational answer. Not really. It wasn't the kind of thing that could be explained in simple words. His gaze softened as he looked into her alien eyes, which seemed to hold an entire galaxy of unspoken questions. I helped you because you didn't deserve to die there, he finally said. No one does, regardless of who they are. We're all just people, Kira. In the end, it doesn't matter what side we're on. It's about saving lives, not fighting for a cause we can't even control. Kira tilted her head slightly, as though trying to process his words. They were simple, yet profound. She had been trained all her life to fight, to see the enemy as nothing more than an obstacle in the way of victory, a faceless foe that needed to be eliminated. But here she was, saved by the very person she had once been taught to consider an enemy. A human, someone who was supposed to be weak and incapable of understanding the ways of her people. And yet, Ethan had shown her the opposite. He had shown her strength in his compassion, something Kira had never thought possible. In a way, she was beginning to question everything she had been taught, everything her people had believed about the galaxy, about humanity. As Kira continued to recover, something unexpected happened. Her curiosity about human life deepened. She began to ask Ethan more questions, probing deeper into the intricacies of human nature. How did humans feel emotions? How did they experience fear, love, joy? And perhaps the most pressing question that lingered in her mind, could a human ever understand the complexities of her own species' emotions? It was a question she wasn't sure even her people could answer let alone a human. Ethan, for his part, was just as curious about Kira and her kind. Despite their differences, he found himself fascinated by the alien physiology and the emotional depth Kira displayed. In many ways, she was unlike any human he had ever met. Her mind worked in ways that were alien, literally, to him, and he wanted to understand her more, understand the pain she had gone through and the horrors her species had endured during the war. But what intrigued him the most was her struggle to comprehend human emotions. Kira was trying to understand love, something that seemed so simple to Ethan, but was deeply complex for her. One day, as they sat together in the dim light of the medical tent, Kira asked him a question that struck Ethan to his core. She looked at him, her eyes intense, filled with a mix of curiosity and something else, something he couldn't quite place. What is love to you? She asked, her voice soft and hesitant. Ethan paused for a moment, the question taking him by surprise. It was a question he had never truly stopped to think about. He had felt love before in different forms, love for his family, for his comrades, and even for Kira in a strange way. But to define it, to put it into words, was something entirely different. Love is complicated, Ethan replied slowly. It's not just one thing. It's a bond, something that connects us to others. It's a feeling that goes beyond just care. It's trust, it's sacrifice, it's wanting the best for someone even when things are hard. Kira looked at him for a long time, as though weighing his words carefully. The notion of sacrifice, of placing someone else's needs above her own, was foreign to her. In her world, survival had always come first. The idea of love being connected to sacrifice, to selflessness, was something she struggled to comprehend. But she was beginning to realize that there was a depth to human emotions that went beyond her understanding. But then, something unexpected occurred. One night, as the camp was shrouded in the peaceful stillness of the desert, 
a group of soldiers from Kira's faction arrived at the human base. They were on a mission to retrieve prisoners, to reclaim the wounded who had been taken during the last battle. Among them, to Ethan's shock, was a high-ranking officer who seemed to recognize Kira. He was a cold, calculating figure, and his eyes narrowed when he saw her lying in the medic's quarters, surrounded by humans. Ethan stood by her side protectively, his hand hovering near the medical kit, ready for any conflict. He had no idea what was going to happen next, but he was prepared to defend Kira if it came to that. He had come to care for her deeply, and there was no way he would allow her to be taken back into the war. The officer, a tall figure with sharp features and an aura of authority, looked from Kira to Ethan. So, this is where the human medic has been hiding the enemy, he said, his voice low and cold. You've helped her, haven't you? Ethan didn't answer right away. He wasn't sure if this was a threat, a challenge, or something else. The tension in the room was palpable, and Kira's eyes flickered between Ethan and the officer. Ethan's voice was calm, but firm as he spoke. I didn't hide anyone. I saved her life, and she's not the enemy. She's just someone who was caught in the middle of this war, just like all of us. Kira's eyes widened as she realized what Ethan was doing. He was defending her, standing up for her in a way she hadn't experienced before. It was the kind of protection she had never imagined coming from someone who should have been her enemy. But was Ethan truly just a human medic, or had he become something more to her? She didn't know yet, but she was beginning to suspect that this was only the beginning of something much bigger than either of them had imagined. The officer stepped forward, his face hardening, but before he could say anything more, Kira spoke up. Her voice was stronger now, and her tone carried an authority that Ethan had never heard from her before. I am not a prisoner, she said, her eyes locking with the officers. And neither is he. The room fell silent as the officer studied her. And for the first time, Kira felt something shift inside her. The fear, the uncertainty. It was still there, but it was no longer controlling her. The officer's eyes widened slightly at Kira's words. It wasn't just the unexpected strength in her voice that made him pause, but the way she carried herself now. Differently than the scared, injured alien he had once seen. This was a new Kira, one who wasn't defined by the alien uniform she wore or the scars of war. She was standing before him as a person, not a soldier, and that shift seemed to unsettle him more than it should have. He shifted uncomfortably on his feet, his gaze flickering between her and Ethan.